Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is the case of the Ido quadruple murders made the four victims. Rest in peace, condolence to their families, and may the correct justice be served. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my contents. I'd like to thank my subscribers, viewers, for all your pleasant, respectful comments you leave behind, and for all the motivation you'll have to get justice for these four victims. One of my favorite or main theories is the Sigma Chi fraternity. The reason I say that is I have a legit reason. The timeline for Zana and Eaton between 9.45 to 1.45 is actually unknown. There's a lot of doubts between 9.45 to 1.45. We were told that the roommates said that they came home at 1.45. The roommates were allegedly asleep. That's what we were told too. So what happened to the couple? Did a fight break up? Because we did hear that there was a fight between David Lodge and Eaton. So what happened to the couple? There was no social media pictures of them seen after nine. At night. Zana told her father that she's going to chill at home. She said she's going to be at home and that was at midnight. Her father said that to the Idaho press. The Sigma Fraternity President said that they don't have cameras. Isn't that strange? So, they're basically saying that they cannot confirm if anyone left and came back around the Simings. We saw David Lodge in the Grub Truck video with two other guys and when Kaylee Maddie and Jack Schwalter walked in all the three boys David Lodge and his two friends turned towards the window they turned their backs towards the girls and Jack Schwalter and Jack Schwalter and then was staring at each other later on. There was a lot of signals going on in the grub truck. Some people may think that it's just innocent, but I don't see anything innocent about the grub truck or the Banfield video. There was a lot going on that night. It's strange the undercover police were saying it's a quiet night. There was a party. Sigma Chi fraternity boys were having a party. And a guy called Mats allegedly was having a party too. I believe in Taylor Avenue around those areas. The reason I say that is it was the three boys that got stopped by the undercover police in Banfield, the alcohol shop, that said they, they came from Mats' party. So there are many people roaming around that night. Uh, it's good to be with you. We are about a block away from the house on King Road where these homicides occurred a little more than three weeks ago. And where I'm standing right now is in front of the Sigma Chi house. The Sigma Chi house is important in this investigation because Ethan Chapin, one of the victims, and his girlfriend, Zanna Kernodal, were at a party here at the Sigma Chi house around 9 p.m. on November 12th. That was that Saturday night hours before these homicides occurred. They then made their way, uh, it's our understanding, made their way from the Sigma Chi house uh, over to the house on King Road, arrived there around 1.45 a.m. There have been some questions. Police had put out a call for information earlier this week about where Ethan and Zana were uh, between the hours of 9 p.m. and 1.45 a.m. 
Um, were they here the whole time at the Sigma Chi house? I asked that question uh, of the PIO yesterday. I didn't get an answer. He said they had received more information about their whereabouts, but he wouldn't tell me where they were. There's since been some other reporting that they've determined that Ethan and Zana were here at the Sigma Chi house all night. We're trying to confirm that and then made their way over about a block away to... What happened at the Sigma Chi? Did the fight get nasty? Could they have all ganged up on the couple? Could they have put a roofie or something in their drinks? Because Eaton would have defended himself. I really believe it started all from this place here. And they don't have a camera. Strange. The 4chan said that the enormous post that they would do it within 90 minutes. They wouldn't take any phone devices so that they don't get connected to the Wi-Fi. These people pre-planned it, allegedly. David Lotch and his friends on the left hand corner, all these people, look at Jack Schwalter looking at them. They all are surrounded around the two girls. Look at the above picture and you can clearly see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people, even the one in yellow. It seems like these people are surveilling, that the girls are on surveillance. There's something going on. Plus, let's not forget there's a live stream going on in the grub truck. The guys buying girls food. So it's a kind of picking out girls from the live stream. Let's be honest. I always wonder if the live stream is the target. Just look at what's going on here. Jack Schwalter's looking at David. That's David Lodge, although it's blurry. Look at this guy, number nine, saying that he's going to put Maddie to sleep. This is right after Maddie gave him a hug and said something in his ear. He came with something and put it in Maddie's mouth. How come an autopsy hasn't been taken? Pay attention.
He's going to put something in Maddie's mouth now. And believe me, it's not his ticket. You can see that. Look at this crowd all watching Mary. This was definitely a targeted crime. Targeted murders. who described the last night of the students' lives. My sisters did everything right. They went out in the buddy system. They went out together. They Ubered out. They stopped and got food. They Ubered home. They let their dog out to go potty. And then they locked their house up. Stopped and got food. They Ubered home. They let their dog out to go potty. And did Kaylee let her dog Murphy out to put a pot to party, sorry. Did she actually let her dog out to party? Maybe something happened there. Plus, the Uber driver dropped the girls in front of the houses and he left. What if somebody was waiting for them at home and as soon as they came in, they ran out? And that's how Maddie's jacket could have ended up in Taylor Avenue, the bushes. That sounds more sensible, because how would Maddie's black coat end up there? And Olivia is Kaylee's older sister. So she would know that she let him out, she let her dog out to party. Did something happen then? The night of the murders, Kaylee's family reported that their daughter had indeed ordered an Uber. And now the man who drove them is revealing exclusive details to us about that ride home and what the girls said in the back of that car. News Nation correspondent Alex Capriello is live tonight. He tracked him down. He joins me from outside the home in Moscow. That was a, a very difficult task. Tell me what you found out, Alex. Yeah, I was able to find this rideshare driver. He's one of only about four here in the Moscow area. So I was able to track down that phone number and give him a call uh, personally, speak to him. I asked him point blank, hey, are you the guy who drove Kaylee and Maddie home that night? And uh, to his credit, he was very transparent very honest, very open, almost immediately with me. Well, understandably, he has said, Alex, that he is very concerned, it's a small community, he doesn't want to be on camera, but he was very revealing in, in what he told you about that ride home. Start there, what did the girls talk about in the back seat? Well, he said that it was actually a rather innocent conversation from the beginning. You might remember that he picked up these two girls from that grub truck. It's the food truck that's located right in downtown Moscow. And really, he said that was the center of their conversation. The entire five minute ride home was about their mac and cheese carbonara that they were planning on splitting when they got back to the house. He said that he's picked them up in the past, not only these two girls, but Zana as well. And he said that in the past, they've talked about boys and drama and college life, but not this time around. It was just a very normal, innocent conversation about their food and how they were gonna share it when they got home. So that's also revealing that, that he knew them. He had had them in the car multiple times before. This, this is a small town. So if they'd taken an Uber, a couple of times it would be likely that he'd be the driver and he said indeed he knew them he knew all three of them 
Yeah, that's exactly right. He said that obviously as one of only about four rideshare drivers in this area, he picks up these girls a lot. And not to mention, we already know that this is so close to frat row. And of course, we've reported that this is a party house. So a lot of times uh, students would come here. And so he said that Xana, that Kaylee and Maddie were no strangers to them. He's given them rides home from the bars, uh, home from work, home from school. So he knows them. He uh, has driven them before. Uh, but back again to this, he said that there was nothing out of the ordinary that night that right now or in that moment uh, that it was just an innocent conversation. Of course, the frats were uh, bumping on a Saturday night, but here at the house, it was quiet and he saw nothing out of the uh, usual. So as you reported earlier this week, Alex, the... It was quite... It was quite in King's Road. But there was a party in the Sigma Chai fraternity. So the party was still on. Did the Sigma... Chai fraternity boys come to the house? We know there was a fight between David Lodge and Eaton and that automatically brings motive in. We know that David L was on steroids the side effects, steroids, is a serious drug. People become aggressive, restless, depressed. They live in panic. They're anxious. They make wrong decision makings. Put all that together and seeing David Lott in the grub truck, staring at Maddie and Kaylee, makes me believe the four champos. I really believe the Sigma tribe fraternity boys were under the microscope for a reason. The Uber driver knows Adam too and Zana. I'm sure he knows all of them in Moscow, I do. There's nothing wrong in that. But I wonder if he was thoroughly checked, like DNA samples. They should have taken DNA samples of everyone they took an interview of. reported earlier this week, Alex, the last thing that we heard on tape was the surveillance camera showing Maddie and Kaylee walking from the Corner Club bar to the grub truck. And the only thing we could hear was, Maddie, what did, what did you tell Adam? And then Maddie responds, I told Adam everything. Was there any conversation in the back of the Uber car about Adam or the bartender? Because Adam turned out to be the bartender. Did, did you mention anything like that? Yeah, actually, the rideshare driver said that he knows Adam. He knows he's a bartender, but Adam was not brought up once at all during that conversation. Again, no conversations about boys, drama, or any trouble in f as far as uh, what the girls were feeling. He said they were not fearful. They weren't skittish in any way. Uh, but back to the food truck, also, I asked him about that. Hey, you were right there. Did you see anything out of the ordinary there? And he said, no, it was a Saturday night at the food truck. A bunch of college kids hanging out, ordering their food before heading home. You know, I brought up uh, a Another person a lot of people have speculated about the hoodie guy he's been uh, referenced as he said he didn't see that guy he has uh, no indication that anything was wrong there at the food truck and certainly during that entire ride share home no indication that anything was wrong there rather pay attention to Joe Vito and his coca-cola can he's actually giving signals with his thumbs You just pay attention to his Coca-Cola can. He's giving signals with his thumb. I've always pointed that out. I don't know if, if he's a dealer 
short, so I don't know what he's up to. See David Lodge and his friends there. And now you see Coca-Cola can. He's giving out signals with his thumb, definitely. You have David Lodge and his friends on the left-hand side. You have the guy with the black tracksuit behind the guy with the cap who's standing near Jack Showalter. Seems like they're texting each other. Pay attention to that. Poor victims, may the rest in peace, may justice be solved. Please like, share and subscribe.